As someone who has in multiple horror movie reviews said something along the lines of jump scares. Stop it. Stop. So now there's a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Here we go. <laughs> So Five Nights at Freddy's is the big screen adaptations. Also coming to Peacock this weekend, I guess. So you don't even have to leave your couch. Though I will say watching this in an auditorium full of Five Nights at Freddy's fans might actually make the experience more enjoyable. So there is that. But it's the big screen adaptation of the massively successful Five Nights at Freddy's game. A game which, full transparency, I haven't played Five Nights at Freddy's. I, like the rest of the world, know enough about Five Nights at Freddy's. I know what the gameplay mechanic is. I know what the characters look like. I know enough to make the occasional reference or joke to Five Nights at Freddy's when the situation calls for it, but I haven't played it. All right, first of all, the premise of Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie, here it is. Josh Hutcherson plays Mike. He's in a family legal battle for the custody of his kid's sister. Also, his little brother was kidnapped when he was a kid. He feels responsible for it. Doesn't really play into anything for the movie, but you know, it's there. Also, he gets the night shift working the security room at, that's right, Freddy Fazbear's. A condemned Chuck E. Cheese-esque family fun center restaurant that has big possessed killer animatronic stuffed animals in it. But what I liked out of the way first, there was a scene, no other way to say it, but there is a scene where people break into Freddy Fazbear's. It's not even at night. It's in the daytime. These people break in, and in a very PG-13 kind of way, these animatronics dispatch the burglars. It's the best scene in the movie by far, made possible by one hit in particular. It's a pretty good one. I'm not in the mindset of a movie like this needs to be rated R in order for it to actually be good. I'm in the mindset of the movie needs to be what the movie needs to be to make the best film possible. Whatever the rating is, that's just a byproduct of that. One hit aside, which was seen from Shadows, that's how they got away with it, but it was a pretty sweet hit. I will say Five Nights at Freddy's would have benefited from being rated R. If you had a fun gore fest thrown in here, that would have really helped out a lot. It being Five Nights at Freddy's is tough because one night is kind of optimal. For a game, it's different, but we're talking cinematic experience. It's just the premise lends itself to someone being there for one night. I get the importance of character development, but in execution just came across as, hey, good news. Five Nights at Freddy's also means Five days not at Freddy's, filled with useless bullshit. Characters we don't care about, dream sequences that just feel out of place and odd. This movie's about an hour, 40 minutes. It could have been an hour shorter. Could have probably been an hour and a half shorter. I mean it, if you trim all the fat, you probably have a solid 15 minute Five Nights at Freddy's fan film. And no, my dislike for this adaptation is not because I don't like jump scares in horror movies, generally speaking, and Five Nights at Freddy's is jump scare fuel. Plot twist. It's only about one jump scare. I think they tried to have more, but they just didn't land. Now you don't even need that. You can have the atmosphere, ambience, and tone of the Five Nights at Freddy's game, which the game has to wind you up. So when the jump scare happens, you snap like a guitar string. But the movie can still have creepy tone. It just wasn't creepy. It wasn't scary. The little girl fucking makes pillow forts. Correction, they were table forts. They were table forts complete with tablecloths, but she makes this fort with the Five Nights at Freddy's killer machines. There were moments where I feel like the script was trying to be funny. It's Matthew Lillard in the limited screen time he has that sells my brain on that. Most anyone else made me feel like I was watching Stab rather than Scream. I'm just left with that feeling of who the fuck talks like this? This movie's the cinematic equivalent to the meal that Nicholas Holt's character in the menu made. Sprinkle in some family drama here, child trauma there, some light slasher moments, some moments of killer animatronics being Nice. What you have is about an hour, 40 minute slog fest that lacks cohesion. In the end, it was just a snooze fest. Absurdly predictable too, I can't stress that enough. I did a little due diligence looking into the plot of the game before I turned on the camera to review the movie. Which is to say, I'm like, where are the 10 to 20 minute YouTube videos that I can listen to while I'm driving home from the screening? Hearing YouTubers break down the lore and story of Five Nights at Freddy's is infinitely more interesting than the film adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's fans have to suffer the tragedy we We've all suffered at the hands of Hollywood, which is they made a shit movie out of a game you love. We've all been there. So sorry fans of the games, once again, a video game adaptation that is dog shit. Now I can see that it is quite possible, even probable, that there are a lot of Easter eggs and references in this movie to the games that I myself did not pick up on for obvious reasons stated. Again, don't know for sure, and I get it, that could be very fun for fans, but just judging the movie as it is, uh, it's about as generic as it gets. All right, so Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or of the games, 
What are the good ones? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.